Assalamu alaikum. Uh, today's lecture is about uh, bacterial infections and leprosy. Now, common bacterial infections, there are many bacterial infections, but we'll be dealing with those that are presenting primarily in the skin, like impetigo, staphylococcal, scalded skin, scalded fever, erysipela, cellulitis. There is a lot many, and mycobacterial infections like tuberculosis and leprosy. Now, what is impetigo? It is a contagious superficial pyogenic infection of skin. There are two types, the non-bullous variety and the bullous variety. The non-bullous is more common. It is usually uh, due to streptococci, but may also be due to staphylococcus. The bullous variety is due to staphylococcus aureus. Non-bullous is more frequent, uh, wide outbreaks worldwide in school-going children, overcrowding hygiene may be associated with scabies, and there are crusted, honey-colored, dirty, scarred lotions, uh, lesions. The bullous variety is sporadic. It is caused by the localized exfoliative toxin of Staph aureus, and the split is below the granular layer, that is the stratum granulosum. It is clear, thin, and there is no scarring, and there is usually no systemic involvement. Diagnosis is by swabs for culture and the biopsy. Management often self-healing. We do not require uh, any treatment or just supportive measurements, cleansers. Topical mucoricin is very important, especially uh, intranasally in the nostrils because the organism usually comes from here. So prophylactically for a longer time, even after the infection has settled, mupiracin is good to, to be applied in children. Systemic antibiotics, fluclocicillin and comoxifab. Now this is a picture. We can see this is the dirty crusted looking. This is variety, this variety is the streptococcal and this is the staphylococcal variety, the cleaner one with less scarring. Erysipelas, Streptococcus hemolyticus agent. It is the um, infection of skin and subcutaneous tissue. There is a prodrome and the morphology shows sharply demarcated red unilateral lesions. It is often, conf um, it is often um, confused with cellulitis. Cellulitis is basically inflammation of the loose connective tissue. It is not an infection. There is raised hot tender area, red area. It is more diffuse, not well demarcated. Bully suppuration and necrosis may be present over it. This is erysipelas. This is the original margin of the lesion when it presented. And now because of treatment, it's going back, receding. This is cellulitis. We can see the difference. There is mark, but there is diffuse demarcation. It's not that clear. Then ichthyma, hard dried exudate. It's usually caused by uh, pseudomonas. Ulcer occurs and leads to scarring. Dorsum, thighs, buttocks, and legs are the most common site. Folliculitis is superficial inflammation of hair follicle. There is no scarring because it is superficial, usually caused by Staph aureus, pseudomonas, petrosporum, etc. It may be sterile, may be due to trauma, friction, or chemicals. Management, it may be self-healing, Topical mupiracin fusitic acid is good. Systemic flu fluclogosacillin clindamycin is given. Necrotizing fasciitis. As the name suggests, it is inflammation of the fascia along with necrosis. And uh, we can just uh, have a look that it is a term that describes a disease, uh, so rapidly spreading infection located in the facial planes of the connective tissue that results in tissue necrosis. Facial planes are basically bands of connective tissues that surround the nerve muscles, nerves, and blood vessels. And facial planes bind the structures together to allow the um, body structures to slide over each other with uh, effective effectiveness. Usually, the organism is group A beta hemolytic streptococci, that is streptococcus pyogenes. But sometimes there is uh, a combination of different bacterial infections or polymicrobial infections, like uh, a mycotic infection may also be associated with this. And it's so in addition to um, different antimicrobial treatment, we may need to debride it as well. Then furuncle, which is also called as boil or abscess, it is acute necrotic hair follicle infection with Staph aureus. It may not be centered on hair follicle and it is deep, so it may scar. Usually occurs in adolescence, 
it begins as a pustule, like folliculitis, but then the inflammatory nodule, then necrosis, and then a scar, and can cluster as contiguous uh, follicles to form a carbuncle. This is a picture of carbuncle, in which the basic underlying uh, collection of pus is same with multiple openings. It may be predisposed by diabetes, malnutrition, cardiac failure, obesity, prolonged steroid use, or generalized dermatosis. Dome-shaped, acutely tender, may become 3 to 10 centimeters. Then suppuration occurs, pus discharge from multiple orifices, necrosis of skin, yellow slough, usually on back of neck and shoulder. Systemic symptoms may be present, results in scarring. Swabs are needed for culture. Management in addition to topical and systemic antibiotic incision and drainage is a must. Then we come on to Henson's disease, which is leprosy. Leprosy is a very old disease. You must have heard that uh, Hazrat Isa or Jesus used to heal the uh, lepers, lepers which, who were shunned by society. It is recognized in ancient China, Egypt, India, and it has left behind a terrifying image of disfigurement, mutilation, and rejection from the society. Mother Teresa established 119 leprosy centers in India and treated 150,000 lepers. In Pakistan, who is this? Dr. Ruth Fah, who established Mary Adelaide Leprosy Center in 1956. It has different centers. Centers are present in um, uh, Pindi, Karachi, other areas. Now, what we will do, we'll do the epidemiology of leprosy first, then the trans transmission and immunology, clinical features and differentials, treatment, the lepra reactions, and the BOS test. Chronic granulomatous infection caused by mycobacterium leprae, acid fast, slow growing bacillus, obligate intracellular, so we cannot grow in culture in the lab. Affects skin, nerves, upper respiratory tract, mucosa, and the eyes, causes progressive damage if untreated. It was discovered by Gerhard Hansen in 1873. That is why it is also known as Hansen's disease. This is a picture with the zeal Nelson positive. Epidemiology, elimination of leprosy was considered 2005, uh, till 2005 it should be eliminated, but still there are pockets. The prevalence has also dropped by 99%. These are the pockets. Unfortunately, we are still included in this part, but not the whole Pakistan, whereas the whole uh, India, the Burma, Nepal, uh, middle to South Africa, and South America. In Pakistan, there are new multipacillary cases in which children, adults, uh, those with grade 2 disabilities, relapses, all are present. This is a picture showing the percentage of uh, leprosy in different parts of the provinces of Pakistan. And unfortunately, in Sindh, it is the highest number. And out of that, in Karachi, it is the highest, 52, 52%. Total leprosy cases. Now, ethnic uh, distribution. This is only for academic purpose. It has nothing to do with the ethnicity, but the statistics that have shown that it is common in 20% of the Urdu speaking population, 20% in the Baloch, then 13% in Pashtuns, then 10% in Punjabis, in Saraikis, and Hinkos, then uh, for, uh, in Bengalis, then 7% uh, in Hinkos, 3% in Sindhis, 3% in Tharvi and Brahmis. Major referral hospitals in Pakistan, there are two, the MALC in Karachi and the Rawalpindi Leprosy Hospital. This is a picture of the Karachi Center. Then there are uh, district headquarter hospitals as well, where there are there is staff which, um, uh, train, which are trained at MALC. Then, then there are patients of leprosy. Then they do the screening and the default tracing provide the standard MDT free of cost, and the patients with complications are referred to the main referred hospitals. Now, how is it transm transmitted and what is the immunolog immunology? Mycobacterium leprosy survival in, uh, survives in the 
warm humid environment for 16 and 48 days in the moist soil. There are some natural reservoirs as well, the armadillo, monkeys, rabbits, and mice. Victim bacilli discharged from the nose are inhaled by a susceptible person, taken up by the alveolar, alveolar macrophages, disseminated blood uh, through the blood, spreads to nerves and uh, skin. Then the bacilli proliferate, especially in the Shawn cells, which are the favorite cells of the bacilli. The incubation period is two to five years, and the symptoms can take 20 years to develop. Now the classification. This is important for treatment. And this is important to predict the risk of development of complications and the leprary actions, and of course, for prognosis. There are two systems, the ridley joplink system, which uses the clinical histopathological and the bacteriological index. It divides it into uh, tuberculoid, borderline tuberculoid, borderline, borderline lepromatous, and the lepromatous, and the WHO classification, which is based on the number of skin lesions, the bacillary and the multivacillary. Immunology, intracellular pathogen recognized by innate immunity. Macrophages recognize and present the antigens and the immunological response mounted by the host dictates the clinical phenotype. That is, it is the host reaction that tells what type of leprosy will the patient have. The polar forms uh, um, conform to an immunological paradigm. Tuberculoid with high cell-mediated immunity, the helper T cells type one immune response, granuloma formation. The lepromatous variety has low cell-mediated immunity, a humoral Th2 type response, bacterial dissemination with no granuloma formation. The borderline formation is immunologically dynamic and moves between the two poles depending on the immunity of the host later on. And these immunological shifts underlie the lepra reactions. Now this is an algorithm which shows Mycobacterium leprae infection, subclinical, initially indeterminate, which is the initial phase. Very good immune response, spontaneous recovery. Patient doesn't even know that he had leprosy. Then strong cell-mediated response, polar tuberculoid. Deficient cell-mediated response, polar lepromatous. Variable cell-mediated response, borderline. Borderline is again divided into the tuberculoid, borderline tuberculoid, borderline, borderline lepromatous, and the lepromatous. Okay, this is according to Ridley Joplin. Then microscopic analysis in the borderline tuberculoid and the tuberculoid variety, the organism is negative. We do not see the mycobacterium leprae. Whereas it is positive in the borderline and borderline lepromatous and the lepromatous pole. Treatment group, this is possibacillary and this is multibacillary. It has one to five skin lesions. This is skin or six or more skin lesions. Clinical features, Early signs, very subtle and occasionally slow, usually over years. First symptom, numbness and loss of temperature sensation. Cannot sense very hot or very cold temperatures. As the disease progresses, the sensations of touch, then the pain and eventually deep pressures are increased or lost. <laughs> the incubation period is 2 to 10 years, so the patient even doesn't remember when he was initially infected. Then there are many peripheral nerves involved. And this affects all sensory, motor and autonomic function. Nerve enlargement due to granulomatous inflammation. Caseation necrosis occurs. Nerve pain is misdiagnosed as joint pain and may present as a painless burn or ulcer because the patient has neuropathy. Indeterminate, you cannot easily actually uh, say that this is leprosy. Then, tuberculoid variety, single or few lesions, asymmetric. Split skin smear is negative. I will be attaching the video of how to take uh, a sample of the slit skin smear so you can see this is the slit skin smear which is negative scaly dry hairless anesthetic area but this has good prognosis and often self heals but damage to peripheral nerves is limited borderline tuberculoid more numerous lesions patches larger may become plaques still asymmetrical well-defined large satellite lesions develop uh, the slit skin, is, uh, slit skin smear is still negative. <laughs> then the borderline lepromatous, you can see the abundance of the lesions, numerous hypoesthetic lesions, almost symmetrical, and that now the slit skin smear becomes start because starts becoming positive. Lepromatous lep leprosy is the most disfiguring one. Actually, this is the one which gave the alarming and uh, mutilating picture of the people of which the people were scared at the initial times. 
Skin changes are poorly defined, symmetrically distributed, hypopigmented lesions, nasal mucosa affected, stuffiness and epistaxis may be present, dermal nerve destruction leading to glove and stock and neuropathy. Okay, uh, then um, peripheral edema of the legs and uh, ankles due to increased stasis, peripheral nerves involvement rate. Leonine facies like the lion, loss of eyebrows, nasal collapse, lumpy ear lobes. This was the picture. This is the actual picture, just like lion's face. The skin thickness, leonine facies, eyelash, eyebrow loss, medurosis. Then saddle nose deformity due to septal perforation. Pure neuritic leprosy often affects the peripheral nerve trunks in the absence of cutaneous signs. Often the patient doesn't present to the derma department. Complications of leprosy, leonine facies, metarosis, um, disfigured lobes, then uh, flexion contractures, gynecomastia, then claw hand, uh, flexion contractures, leg of thelmus, corneal anesthesia, saddle nose, Trophic ulcers, orchitis, shortening of digits, acquired ichthyosis, foot drop, and hematosis. Metarosis, saddle nose, blindness in the left eye in this patient. You can see the auto amputation. Auto amputation. Causes of blindness may be due to different through nerve damage and by direct bacillary in, uh, invasion, leading to exof, uh, leg of thalamus, corneal ulceration, acute or chronic iridocyclitis, secondary cataract. Differentials, these are the common differentials. So a uh, patient may present with uh, either of these and we may think that it is P. alba, P. versicolor, vitiligo, cutaneous tuberculosis, sarcoidosis, and in actual, it may be tuberculosis. Differentials in nerve conditions are these. Now, how to diagnose presence of skin lesions with definite sensory loss or thickened peripheral nerves is highly suggestive. Laboratory diagnosis. Collection of specimen from the biopsy sample skin, from the scrapping, nasal exudate, the zeal Nelson staining, AFP, accumulated in the intracellular encapsulated globular masses, leprosy globi, as they are said, cultivation is not possible. Rarely nerve biopsy may be needed for the pure ones. Now the bacteriological or bacillary index interpretation. As mentioned, bacilli are not found in the indeterminate group in the borderline tuberculoid in the polar tuberculoid, but they become positive in the borderline, in the borderline lepromatous and the lepromatous, polar lepromatous. And as they increase, the number of bacillary index increases. It depends on the um, how many bacilli are seen in oil immersion field in one glance. We cannot cultivate it because it is obligate intracellular parasite and lacks many necessary genes for the independent survival. Armadillo, rodents, are the natural reservoirs. Now treatment. First anti-leprosy anti drug uh, in 1940s was Stepsone. Then since 20 years, it was providing good results. And then there was resistance to monotherapy. And then rufampus and clofazamine were discovered. Now the multi-drug therapy is given. Often there is, this is the first line treatment. Of, often after that, there is a second line treatment as well. And this is provided briefly, of course, by WHO. Simple and uh, 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 prevents the disabilities from developing. Patients are non-infectious within 72 hours of treatment. This is a good point. No resistance has uh, developed. Relapse rates are very low. Very low. Bacillary index, if more than four, then the relapses are more common. With multi-bacillary disease, nerve impairment, follow-up should be for two years after cure. This was a child before treatment. She's a child of seven years. Can you imagine? She doesn't look like seven years in this picture. And after treatment, two years with antibiotics, that is anti-leprotic medicines, her appearance has improved dramatically. MDT, supervised and unsupervised. That is, the patient comes monthly, he's given these treatments, and then he's given medicines for daily taking. For the possibacillary, six months treatment. So you see... Uh, in uh, the posse bacillary, we do not give clofazamine. 
single lesion for CPSLRA, rifampicin or floxacin, which is the second, uh, second line plus minocycline second line. Second line drugs are minocycline, clarithromycin, moxifloxacin, and ethionamide. Now there are side effects like close of clofazamine, crystals are deposited, may cause entropathy, ichthyosis, reddish brown skin, and conjunctival discoloration and darkening of the involved, uh, the involved skin, but this is all reversible. Depsone side effects, hemolysis, in, uh, especially in G6PD deficiency. So in patients with G6PD deficiency, we cannot give Depsone. Cytopenia, severe hypersensitivity syndrome. All this is reversible. Counseling is important because it is not a hereditary condition. It's not a curse of God. It is not due to past sins. It should not be made a social stigma. It is not dependent on caste or class. Doesn't always lead to deformity. Is 100% curable being in uh, being a bacterial disease, the patient may lead a completely normal social life and it should be encouraged, especially with the relatives. Now, preventing disability. Secondary damage to neuropathic areas must be prevented. Advice on protective footwear. Self-examination should be taught and early trauma recognition should be done. Now, what are lepra reactions? Erythema nodosum leprosum. Fever and crops of new painful erythematous nodules appear during treatment. They affect face and extensive surfaces due to antigen antibody complex deposition and may be recurrent or chronic. Systemic symptoms are present. It is seen in patients with high bacterial load and extensive skin lesions, so it is common in the it's a lepra reaction of the lepromatous variety. High dose uh, prednisolone and thalidomide has to be given. Type 1 lepra reaction is seen in the borderline tuberculoid, borderline, and the borderline lepromatous during treatment. The pre existing lesions become fiery. System symptoms are rare. Edema of hands, feet uh, may, appear, uh, may occur and it is recurrent. No new lesions are present, but the patient is systemically better. Now this is a, a acute neuritis requiring nerve decompression. Lepra 1 reaction, high dose steroids is enough. We do not need to give any clofazamine or thalidomide or anything. And multi-drug therapy should be continued during a reaction. Leprosy in a pregnant female, ENL reactions occur throughout pregnancy and lactation. Type 1 reactions improve during uh, pregnancy but may occur and may increase in parturition and post delivery. Or onset of nerve damage is early. HIV, HIV does not increase the susceptibility to M. leprae or alter its clinical picture. Similarly, mycobacterium leprae does not alter immune function decline, unlike mycobacterium tuberculosis. The response to MDT is unaffected. Reactions may occur with increased frequency in type 1, uh, especially type 1 reaction in uh, HIV. Latent leprosy infections may be unmasked as iris, that is the treatment that is given following ARV. Now the recap, leprosy is an, is an infectious but curable condition caused by mycobacterium leprae. It has been eliminated globally, but pockets of high endemicity remain. It is transmitted after close contact with a leper. It is the most severe disfiguring form, lepromatous leprosy. MDT provides a simple cure for all types of leprosy. There can be paradoxical worsening during treatment due to lepra reactions. There is a need to increase expertise and number of skilled uh, leprosy staff to reduce deformities. There should be no discrimination of a leprosy patient. And according to Mother, Mother Teresa, the biggest disease today is not leprosy or the tuberculosis, but rather the feeling of being unwanted. Now, this is a small test. You can check it, do it yourself. I'm just going uh, over quickly. You can do it at home yourself. Tuberculoid leprosy. Lepromatous leprosy. Borderline tuberculoid leprosy, lepromatous leprosy. There is facial nerve damage and loss of eyelashes. Wasting of the right muscles due to ulnar nerve damage, claw hand indicating both ulnar median involvement. Dressing because of foot uh, anesthetic foot ulcer. Foot drop is due to common peroneal nerve involvement. Type 1 le lepra reaction or the reversal reaction. Erythema nodosum leprosum reaction. Thank you.
Assalamualaikum. Today's lecture is about acne. Acne is a very common um, disease that is present in the teenage, especially in the younger adults. Now, what is acne? It's a multifactorial disease caused by abnormalities in the sebum production, follicular desquamation, bacterial proliferation, and inflammation. It's a disease of the adolescents and the young adults. It's one of the most common cutaneous disorders in the West. And uh, even in our countries, but in our, uh, in our part of the world, it is the infections that are more common. Now, what are the questions uh, regarding acne? How does acne develop? What are the factors affecting acne? What are the predisposing factors? It is, is it familial, associated with dust or diet, cosmetic causes, drug causes, any stress role? It's a disease of the pilosebaceous follicles. There are four factors, retention hyperkeratosis, increased sebum production, proliferation of the propionobacterium acnes, and the inflammation. It commences in the pilosebaceous units in the dermis. Here, pilosebaceous unit means hair follicle in the sebaceous gland. They are connected to the skin by a duct and in fundibulum through which the hair shaft pass, passes. There are two, the the non-inflammatory acne, which is characterized by the closed and open comedones, and the other acne is the pustular acne. Then there is increase in the activity of sebum glands, uh, sebaceous glands, and the epithelial tissue lining in the infundibulum. The glands produce more sebum, causing increased oiliness of the skin. The epithelial cells become more distant, durable, and uh, stick together to form a coherent horny layer, which blocks the follicular channel. This gives rise to microcomedo. That is, we don't know about it, that it is something has formed under our skin. Normally, what happens, the epidermal cells continuously slough off and move to the surface of the skin within with the sebum. As more cells in sebum are added, the comedo becomes um, enlarged, the whitehead, and is called a closed comedone because it's con before its contents reach the surface of the skin. If the plug enlarges and protrudes from the orifice of the follicular canal, the top becomes open. It's now called as an open comedone. Its contents appear of open to the surface of the skin and the tip may darken blackhead because of the accumulation of melanin that is produced by the epithelial cells of the follicular lining. Again, the same in algorithm, follicular hyperkeratinization, proliferation plus decreased t squamation of keratinocytes causes hyperkeratotic plug or the microcomedone. Then the sebaceous glands enlarge, sebum production increases, good growth medium for propionobacterium acnes, plugs provide anaerobic lipid-rich environment, bacteria thrive, inflammation results, Chemotactic factors attract the neutrophils. Depending on conditions, non-inflammatory, that is the open-closed comedogenic acne and the inflammatory papillopustular nodular acne. Comedogenic, non-comedogenic, then acne excori, which is more common in the females due to picking up of acne, mechanical or contact acne due to the things that come in contact with acne, acne conglobata is a serious condition with draining sinuses, but no systemic features usually occurs in males. Acne fulminance with the same features like acne conglobata with the nodular nodulocystic lesions with draining sinuses along with the systemic features. Then the rosacea, which is actually, actually an, uh, a misnormal, it's not an acne, but it's called as acne rosacea. It's not acne. This is a picture of comedonal acne. You can see the comedones and you can see the inflammatory or the papillopustular acne. Picture, uh, picture of the hyperkeratotic plug, the microcomedone. We do not know about it, that something is happening under our skin at this moment. There is blocking of the uh, follicular canal. Closed comedone, you can see very clearly the whitehead, which is uh, due to the accumulation of sebum. Then the closed, again the same whitehead closed comedones. These are the blackheads, very clear, very resistant to treatment. Blackheads. Closed comedone whitehead, when it comes onto the surface, exposure, oxygen oxidation, melanin pigmentation, blackhead. Okay, so acne is characterized by inflammation surrounding the comedones, uh, papules, pustules, and nodulocystic lesions, and this may cause permanent scarring. Inflammatory acne begins in the closed comedones and may become open. Normal sebum does not contain the free fatty acids and is non-irritating. However, in the presence of the biolytic enzymes produced by the coronibacterium acnes or the propionobacterium acnes, 
the triglycerides of the sebum are split and release fatty acids, which are the irritating thing to the tissue. And thus sebum contributes to inflammation of the surrounding tissue. The inflamed follicle or pustules either heal in about a week or develop into cyst or sterile abscesses, which can lead to scarring. When follicles rupture into the surrounding tissue, it results in papules, pustules, and nodules, and the cysts. These are the cystic lesions you can see. Aggravating factors changes in sebaceous activity and hormonal levels, for example, before or during the premenstrual cycle, high humidity conditions, local irritation or friction, rough or occlusive clothing, cosmetics, oils, breezes, your dyes, and hair product. As far as the diet is concerned, some uh, idiosyncratic reactions are there with the dairy products or carbohydrates or sugars. Otherwise, this is a fallacy. Treatment may be long, uh, has to be long term to reduce permanent scarring, removal of excess sebum, and uh, prevention of uh, pilosebaceous orifices closure has to be done. And then the topically applied oils and fats have to be avoided. Then there are certain medications that can increase acne. We have to avoid these drugs. Uh, then treatment depends on the type of the clinical lesions. We have to choose the vehicle for topical drug depending on the patient's skin, skin type. For example, gel form for uh, dry for uh, oily skin and cream form for the dry skin. The microcomedones mature in eight weeks, so sometimes we have to continue the treatment. We have to tell the patient that the treatment has to continue at least for two to three months. Then ingredients in the over-the-counter product, we have to uh, minimize those things. Combination of various treatments have to, uh, is advantageous like resorcinol and salicylic because it removes the follicular plug. Benzoyl peroxide is a primary irritant which increases the rates of sloughing and promotes resolution. Salicylic also increases sloughing. These products may give a feeling of warmth, slight stinging and reddening. So you have to very gradually increase the dose and not increase it. Retinoic acid, acid form of vitamin A is a strong primary irritant, but is very effective. Uh, we have to start very little, should not be taken with other keratolytic, that is, both will have synergistic effect. Should not be applied to wet skin as it causes excess, excessive irritation. Excess exposure to strong sunlight has to be avoided, does not cause the toxic effects of the large doses of vitamin A. Tetracyclines and other antibiotics have to be administered orally and concentration of the fatty acids in the sebaceous uh, follicle has to be reduced. Topical antibacterial agents are really uh, actually ineffective because they, are, they don't go as deep as uh, to affect uh, coronary bacterium uh, acnes, but we do apply in the starting phase of any acne treatment for topical effect. Oral tetracycline and the erythromycin, both are given. Sunlight is beneficial in some patients. Lotions, creams are usually, it depends on the uh, type of skin that is being used. Uh, according to that, we have to select the vehicle. Topical agent, salicylic azelic acid is very good because it reduces acne as well as hyperpigmentation. Then the glycolic acid for the peel and the sulfur in the over-the-counter counter treatment for keratolytic agent. Then mild to moderate acne requires benzoyl peroxide, topical antibiotics, combinations and um, Combination treatment for inflammatory reactions. Then mild to moderate inflammatory acne requires topical plus uh, clindam topical to eliminate propionobacterium acne and to reduce inflammation, clindamycin, erythromycin, tetracycline, metronidazole, and azelic acid. We do not have to oral, um, topical to tetracycline. Then moderate to severe acne requires um, or oral isopretinoin, oral antibiotics, and hormonal therapy if hormonal issues are seen. Oral tretinoin, isotretinoin has effect on all the four actions, on all the four path pathologies or etiologies of acne, so it's best. It reduces the sebaceous gland size and sebum production and regulates cell proliferation and differentiation. The effect lasts um, one month after secession, only medication altering the course of acne vulgaris. Isotretinoin has adverse effects which can be severe, including teratogenicity, Increased triglycerides, bone marrow suppression, hepatotoxicity, and it is uh, one of the top 10 drugs for suicide and depression reports. FDA practice rules two negative pregnancy tests before starting isotretinoin pregnancy tests each month. Each month, physicians need authorization before prescribing 
pregnancy risk patients must use two contraceptives for at least one month prior to treatment. Oral antibiotics, tetracyclines, minocycline, doxycycline, erythromycin, sulfamethoxazole, trimethoprim, that is uh, cotrimoxazole, clentamycin, and given daily over four to six months with tapering uh, dosage. Now the patients ask soaps, detergents, they remove sebum but do not alter production. So they are just synergistic uh, action. They have synergistic action. We have to avoid occlusive clothing. Water-based cosmetics are better uh, than oil-based. Diet modification has actually no role. So this was a small lecture on acne. Uh, you can repeat the lecture and see if you have any queries, you can ask me. Thank you.